Witchcraft is the attempt to control a person and make them do what you want them to do by use of any other spirit than the Holy Spirit. Witchcraft has been forbidden in the Bible. We see this in Leviticus 19, 26, 31 and Leviticus 20 verse 6, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. God was very clear that things of witchcraft, divination, soothsaying, familiar spirits, these things were not allowed to be practiced and people who practiced these things, they were actually stoned to death for doing these things because of so much open door that this creates for the demonic spirits. We have to understand is that witchcraft's favorite target is hunting believers' souls. In Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 18 it says, And say, Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the woman who sew magic charms on their sleeves and made veils for the heads of people of every height to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people? and keep yourselves alive? So this is what God was asking. And then if we go a little bit further, a few verses down in Ezekiel 13 verse 20, 21, 22, it says, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against your magic charms by which you hunt souls there like birds. I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go. And souls, the souls you hunt like birds, I will also tear off your veils and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall no longer be as prey in your hand. Then you shall know that I am your Lord. I want you to notice how magic, the charms, the witchcraft was hunting the souls of God's people. Now there are people and I have a whole video about it who believe that Christians cannot be affected by stuff like that or Christians cannot have demons and all of that. That's for another day, another video. But we see that witchcraft targets the souls of His people. Now it cannot target the spirits of God's people but it seeks to target the souls of our people to keep people in oppression, to keep people in depression and to, pe pe to keep people in bondage. Witchcraft is the religion of the fallen humanity. That's what Der Derek Prince likes to say. In 1 Samuel 15, 23 it says the following, For the rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. We are rebels by nature. We rebel to God in the Garden of Eden, in Adam. And therefore, part of this rebellion, what it brought to humanity is witchcraft. The root of witchcraft is rebellion. We must understand is that three things about um, witchcraft is that divination operates by revelation, by prediction, you know, so divination operates by predicting the future. Witchcraft operates by spells, by curses, hypnosis and then sorcery operates by charms, drugs and so many other things. There is three types of witchcraft and the first one is the work of the flesh and many people don't realize is that Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 and verse 20 it goes through the list of the works of the flesh and it says the now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dis, uh, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness and like. I tell you beforehand as I told you in the past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Have you noticed that in some translation it says sorcery, in some translation it says witchcraft or divination. Have you noticed that sorcery, witchcraft and divination is work of the flesh? Now you may say, how is that work of the flesh? I thought it's just demonic. Yeah, it's demonic in nature but it can be work of the flesh. The way it operates as work of the flesh is in three simple ways. Manipulation, intimidation and domination. Where humans manipulate, intimidate and dominate another human being and that is a form of witchcraft. Witchcraft as work of the flesh. God does not dominate, intimidate and manipulate. That's not the work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, even the fruit of the Spirit is not spirit control. It's self-control. The Holy Spirit leads. He doesn't drive. You drive a car but you lead sheep because we are humans. We are meant to be led, not driven. 
And so when a person begins to drive another human being, dominate another human being, enslave another human being, it's work of the flesh. Witchcraft is operating there. This is very common in families where, for example, kids or women would manipulate, you know, kids would manipulate their parents or women would manipulate their husbands. Intimidation is a lot more common in men where they would intimidate women or children. And domination is something that could operate in both genders. This can happen in ministry where work of the flesh, where a boss or a pastor or a CEO, instead of leading the staff, the leaders, but they intimidate, they dominate, and then they cut corners and they manipulate people. And that is a form of witchcraft. That's a form of the flesh. And it needs to be repented of. And we need to, we need to embrace the fruit of the Holy Spirit which is love, kindness, patience, long-suffering, self-control and so on. The second form of witchcraft is a demonic force. It's when witchcraft is a demonic force. Witchcraft is a spiritual power that operates by spells and curses. So we see the first one is work of the flesh. The second one is when it's power of Satan working through spells and through curses. In Job chapter 3 verse 8 it says, May those who curse it curse the day, those who are ready to arouse Leviathan. So Job of course is not very happy with how his life is turning around and so he says, Those people who do cursing, may they curse the day that I was born and those who are ready to arouse Leviathan. Something happens when spells, curses, are pronounced by people who are in the profession or who are through their anger or their connection to Satan are called witches or warlocks and they release curses and spells. They arouse Leviathan. They arouse demons. These are not just empty words. Please understand. Charms, spells, curses. These are not empty things. They have power behind them. Bible clearly states those who do that they arouse Leviathan. Demons are aroused by spells and by curses. We see in 1st Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13 it says, So Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed against the Lord because he did not keep the word of the Lord. And now I want you to see this. It says also because he consulted a medium for guidance. So one of the reasons Saul died was first he didn't keep the word of the Lord and then we see that he consulted a medium. He went to the other side if I could say for direction, for guidance because God stopped talking to him. He ignored God's voice so many times that after that God just went silent on him. And so he went to the other side. He went to a medium. Even though he prohibited witchcraft, he drove away all the mediums but there was one that was kept there one that stayed still there and then he goes to her and next thing that happens is that that same or the next day he dies and so this stuff is real witchcraft spells mediums all of that brings the wrath of God on the person who practices it and it withdraws God's protection from the person and then demons they begin to torment because it's in the nature of demons. No matter how much you domesticate them, no matter how much you like them, no matter how much you want them to be nice and good spirits, okay? It's like taking a python in your house or keeping, you know, a snake. A snake is a snake. It's in the nature of the snake to attack and to kill. And you can't change its nature because you're good or because you want that nature to change. Another way that witchcraft as the demonic force operates is through divination. Divination in Acts chapter 16 verse 16 it says, Now it happened as we went to prayer there was a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. So in Greek mythology they believed that Python serpent guarded, guarded the oracle of Delphi until Apollo slew it and then he took on the name of Python. The word later was applied to diviners and soothsayers inspired by Apollo. So it's pretty much a demonic entity, demonic spirit. The word divination in Acts 16.16 16 is actually a word for python. It's a snake spirit. 
And so this woman had this snake spirit and through this snake spirit she was able to fortune telling, she was able to predict certain things. And it's not that she knew the future, it's that she would predict it and then people who believe in it, demons would arrange that future like that. Thus opening their life to the demonic influence. They would open their life to the demonic control. Now at first it seems like, well, what, what is wrong with that? I mean, she just predicts everybody um, the future and she produces profit. You must understand one thing. It's in the nature of Satan to steal, kill and destroy. He will never betray his nature for anyone. It's just the way he is. So whatever, if he gives you something with the right hand, he will always take it with the left hand. And plus he seeks worship. He seeks to get us addicted to materialism so that we can turn our face away from God. And that's exactly what was happening here. And Paul cast that demon out. Fortune tellers, you know, going to see and trying to figure out your future, palm readers and all of this stuff. All of that is not only displeasing to God, all of that will bring defeat in your life sooner or later because it's giving access to Satan. It's drinking poison. You will suffer for it. You will pay a price for it. Satan is not going to let you succeed. He's not the author of success. He doesn't come to give life and more abundantly. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. It's like having a, a thief in your house. You will have stuff missing. Things will be broken and Satan is not just a thief. He's a murderer. He's a killer. He's, he's out to, you know, snakes don't just kind of like make your place uncomfortable. They kill. And you know, one interesting thing about pythons is pythons do not kill by injection. Pythons do not kill by biting. Pythons kill by surrounding its victim and squeezing their breath slowly. I read a story of a python that was located on a store above, story like a, another level of the house and two little boys lived on the store on the level below and python slipped from the cage, went through the window, went into the bed with two boys and squeezed the life out of them. They didn't even scream and when they woke up in the morning, Python surrounded them, hugged them, of course killed them. And that's exactly how this spirit works. It squeezes your faith in God. It squeezes the breath of God in your life. And you're like Saul. You start out good and because you go to the mediums, you go to fortune tellers, you look to horoscopes to see your future, you lose your connection to God, you lose your relationship with God and then you, you depart from faith, heeding to deceiving spirits and to the doctrine of demons. The other way that this demonic witchcraft works is through sorcery and sorcery works through objects, charms, music and drugs. And so casting spells, potions, enchantments, cursing a person, anything that predicts your future or advises your life, magic practices or spiritism, all of these things are forms of witchcraft through which Satan will enter and at first he might offer you something just to temporarily hook you in but my friend when the fisherman throws a bait for the fish the fisherman is not intending to to feed the fish he's intending to feed himself at the expense of the fish any success or truth you find through witchcraft sorcery divination it's all a bait but the goal behind it is to hook you so that Satan can take you out of the water of God's truth and into his kingdom and gut you out and completely destroy your life. And God will not stop him from doing that because when you take the bite of that forbidden tree, my friend, you walk away from God's protection. So the first form of witchcraft is the work of the flesh. The second form of witchcraft is demonic force. And the third form of witchcraft is actually something that can operate in the church when we do not trust the gospel. Now you may say, what? It's actually in the Bible in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 it says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Only thing I want to learn from you, did you receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the flesh or by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So in Galatians, they, they moved from the grace to the law. They moved from trusting in Jesus for their salvation to trying to earn their salvation by good works, which is actually another word for religion. Every religion really has one thing at common. And that's why, you know, all the religions are the same. It's man's attempt trying to reach God. But Christianity is different. Christianity is God coming to man. 
Christianity is about Jesus. It's not about us. It's not about our good works. It's about His finished work on the cross. When the church, when believers begin to move from grace, from the cross, from the blood, from Jesus crucified, risen Savior, that church, that ministry is under a spell. It's a demonic spell. You may say, church can be under a spell. Well, Paul clearly states it can. And demons, Satan, the kingdom of darkness benefits from Christians living in deception, thinking they can earn their salvation by good works. And we need to receive the truth, like Paul says in here, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? We have to trust the truth. Jesus is the truth. What He said is the truth. And look to the cross, the crucified Savior. Not look to our good works, not look to our achievements, not look to our righteousness and holiness as a means to get salvation. Because if we do, we are under a spell. We are under an evil eye. We are bewitched. We're under witchcraft. Spiritual form of witchcraft that can operate in the church. And so I just want you to be educated about it. I also want you to spot, you know, not to allow the works of the flesh in your life, domination, intimidation, manipulation. And I want you to stay away as far as you can from sorcery, divination, witchcraft, charms, spells, horoscopes, fortune telling, science, uh, sciences and crystal balls and palms reading and, you know, all kinds of tarot cards and Ouija boards, handwriting analysis and um, all kinds of mediums, levitations, communicating with the dead, water witching, psychic powers, hypnosis and self-hypnosis and black magic, white magic, superstition and Christian science healing and all kinds of demonic things. Even the, the books about that stuff. Walk away from that. Look to Jesus. Why are you looking to the stars for your future? Stars don't have your future. The star of David, he who made the stars, knows your future and he will guide you to it if you trust him. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you were encouraged, strengthened and I hope the truth will set you free. Share this with somebody. Post it on your social media as well. Drop it in the comment below. What's something that you learned from this video? I believe it was a blessing to you. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on the bell button so that you can be reminded each time we upload or when we go live. Thank you and until next time.